Hi, this is Mark from LongArWatch.com, and today we're going to go over a couple of Ballast watches. Ballast is not a new brand to me. I've carried it for several years now, and in fact, it was one of the brands that I first did a video on that made me really, you know, want to talk about engineering uh, when it comes to watches. I'm going to put the uh, two of them aside for now, and we'll start with the one that I consider is, you know, really the most conventional, if you will, or, you know, not, <laughs> not like in, in the styling of the one with the tremendous uh, cage on it. I I do want to say before we start guys, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Instagram. I poke I try to post cool stuff every day and you never know when something's going to come up that you want to take part in. So I'm going to start with this model here. It's model 3142. What intrigued me about Ballast when I first saw the watches is it's winding and setting system. It's not your conventional crown. In fact, this isn't even a crown. This is a screw down canteen. Okay, the watch winds with the bezel. Yes, the bezel. The first watch to do this, um, I'm pretty sure, was the Ulysses Nardan Freak. Um, and then Ballast came out with a very much more affordable uh, way to wind your watch in the same fashion. Now they all wind the same way. So you wind it by spinning, well with gloves it's going to be very difficult. Uh, you wind it by spinning the bezel counterclockwise. Let's see if I can do it. If not, I'll take the glove off. There it goes. So if you actually hear it, I'm actually, I'm actually winding the watch. It's actually churning my chocolate. Name the movie. Uh, so I'm actually winding the watch and then to set it, you'll notice I took this canteen off. So the watch is running. It is an automatic. Let's zoom in a bit. Okay. Uh, to set the day and the date, uh, the date and the time, you, there's a little button here. You push in the button and you, you feel it set. And then when I turn the crown, check it out. I'm doing the time. Isn't that nifty? And then... Let's see, let me get it past midnight. Okay, I guess it was noon. That's fine. Uh, and then to, whoops, you have to, when you're done, you push this down, screw it in, or you can press this button, and it resets everything to set the date. It's just one gentle click in when you push, and one of these ways will change the date. There it goes. When you're done, you push this in. So that's just so nifty, uh, the, the way the watch winds. Uh, let's get into the watch itself. So. Uh, it is, I'm getting my notes together here. None of these are small guys, you can tell. They are large watches. Looking at 47 millimeters in diameter, 14 and a half thick, 54 on the tip to tip. Exhibition case back. It is a Miyota A21A movement. It is a sapphire crystal. It is a 22 millimeter lug, a beautiful blue strap branded. Check out the buckle, obviously, or maybe not obviously to you yet. The brand is inspired by submarines, and check out the buckle, the cutout of a submarine on it. That is an amazing detail. Water resistant to 100 meters, the watch goes for about 370 bucks. Uh, this one comes in a couple different varieties. This one I, I recently picked up, I'm trying to center the bezel. Uh, this one I recently picked up uh, because I felt like it was the most conventional of the lineup. Uh, but you can see it really is it's done extremely well. Look at the attention to detail. The plate on the side, with the motto, we come unseen. Really nice. Uh, this one comes in a, a slightly different color scheme as well, uh, but cool. Let's move on to the next one. So this guy is uh, Ballast 3135, and there's a little more going on here. Um, check that out as I turn. You can probably see some of the detail coming to life. Uh, another Miyota, uh, Miyota 8215. This is titanium, sandblasted. Look how beautiful it is. It's 46 and a half in diameter. It's 14 and a half thick to a sapphire crystal. It's 54 on the tip to tip. Totally beautiful. Look at the rotor. The rotor is done in that, you know, kind of, I guess that's a, uh, a sub propeller. Blue anodized crown, blue anodized bezel. Uh, Everything's the same. You wind it the same way. I don't have to show you that system. Canteen comes up, blah, blah, blah. But even the button is blue anodized. So nifty. Uh, so this one is a little more pricey at 562. My glove is sticking to it. Is a little more pricey at 562 uh, due to the titanium. But look at the strap. Check it out. Buckle. Not a detail is missed. 
really nice, really light. Uh, why don't we uh, come in on the dial just a smidgen so you can see what's going on there. Well, I'm actually winding it. I'm, I was pushing the bezel a little bit and I started to wind it. Very nice. See the date aperture under the, uh, the other side of the, um, I guess the other turbine blade. Really cool. So look at the crystal. So the crystal actually has some of the markers attached to it. it gives it unbelievable depth and unbelievably different kind of view when you check out the watch. Love it. Uh, let's move on to the last one. So I'll be honest, I don't get the appeal of the shroud, but I think it's important to show it. The shroud comes off and underneath is a gorgeous watch. This is the Ballast 3136 model. Uh, this whole shroud comes off. A little wing nut, unscrew it. And now we have a normal watch. Thank goodness. Uh, this is a bronze case. Beautiful bronze. Check it out. Look at the patina already starting on it. It's 47 in diameter. 14 and a half again to that sapphire. 54 on the tip to tip. Very similar cases, if not these same case shapes of, on all three of these. Uh, sapphire exhibition case back. This is a Swiss movement 26 joules. So we're probably looking at a... Uh, a Salita SW200, uh, 100 meters of water resistance, and this guy goes for a, a little over 700. I'll see if I can wind up with the gloves. Again, with the gloves, difficult. Let's uh, get a little bit of a better look at the dial and the casework. Again, there's so much detail. Look at the dial work, the cutout of ballast shining through. We'll go. We'll get to the loom in a second. Really nice looking. Again, on the blue anodized blue strap, of course. I picked a couple, you know, and then they happen to all have some blue in it. What a shocker. Brass buckle, or excuse me, bronze buckle to match. Really cool. Let's do a loom shot, and I'm just, you know, they're all the same case size. I'll try one of them on, but, you know, I can tell you they're likely going to be too large. So we're not skimping in the loom department at all. Very easy to see. All of them, absolutely no problems. Uh, this one's really cool with the raised markers on the glass. Nifty, you know, not, you know, again, there's a lot of cool engineering going on, not just the winding system, but the entire design aesthetic of the watch is pretty nifty. So I will try on the one that I consider to be the least radical, if you will. It's large for my wrist, eh, probably not overkill. I think I, could, I think I could pull it off and still get away with it. There I am on the, on the strap and that beautiful buckle, plenty of room to go. It really, you know, it really looks nice, and that whole winding system, that is so cool. So this has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, showing you some new ballast watches to hit the store. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram if you can, please. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below, and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.